Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for April 6th, 2022. I told you that this year I would be teaching on intentional progress. And once I got closer to Resurrection Sunday, now we're like a little bit over a week away from Resurrection Sunday. We're going to talk about Good Friday, you know, here soon. We're going to experience Good Friday and then Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday morning. So once I got into this vein in Lent season, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, I've been teaching not just life lessons from the life of Jesus, but the importance of the cross, the importance of where Jesus died to deliver us from. Not only did Jesus die to deliver us from sin and death, but Jesus died to deliver us from the bondage of the law, of rules and regulations. So I'm going to talk about that today. I want you to open up your heart and get ready to receive the word. All right, let's get ready to receive. So let me say this as I'm getting uh, ready for the word this morning. Um, some of what I've been flowing in and some of the ways that the Holy Spirit gives, I love the Holy Spirit. Some of the ways that the Holy Spirit gives me uh, to communicate with you in a way that you can see here and understand is amazing. Some of this, I've never heard anybody explain it this way, but the Holy Spirit explains it to me in a way that I can understand it. And then I can turn around and explain it to you in a way that you can understand it. So like even the the message that I, f- I did a few days ago about all these transitions and all of that, man, that was good. I never heard anybody explain it like that, but he gave it to me that morning and then I gave it to you. I can only give you what he gave me. And so as I'm flowing in this, uh, I, I just believe that this is liberating. I hope that this is uh, being a blessing to you. Leave me some comments in the chat if you've really been enjoying uh, this series. The title of today's message is Jesus the law, and the Holy Spirit. Let me just say this before I get into the message. I get a lot of feedback normally, like just normally I get a lot of feedback uh, and I appreciate it. Um, But in this series right now, like people like, man, I've never really, you know, this is, this is like, man, I've never heard this. And and so I'm processing it. And of course I'm giving you my notes so you guys could check it for yourself and all of that. And one of the things that uh, I was sharing with my wife last night, I'm looking and somebody on YouTube commented, uh, they just said, hey, this message changed my life. I just want you to know that this message changed my life. And so I was sitting there, man, I I can't tell you how humbled I am, how grateful, how thankful I am that I get to do what God has called me to do. And and so like, look, look, you know, you, you may not be called to do what I'm called to do, but if you're called to be a doctor, a dentist, a brick mason, a business person, you run a mechanic shop, whatever you're called to do, do it and do it to the glory of God. I'm called to do this, right? I'm called to do several things. But anyway, one of the things I'm called to do is this. And as I do it, I'm just so humbled and thankful and grateful that God uses me to touch other people. uh, And it's all for his grace, by his grace, and it's all for his glory. And so uh, I just want to say thank you. I love you. I thank God for you. I appreciate you. God called me to do this. And and if there were not a you to receive it, then he would not have called me to do it. So he called me to do it because of you. And so, so thank you for allowing me to speak into your life. I thank God for you. I appreciate you. All right. So let's get into the word uh, for this morning. So I'm flowing in this vein of the law and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and all that. So I'm building. I'm building my case. If you've been watching, you know I, I, I'm building. I'm building my case. I'm trying to prove to you that you're no longer under the law, that Jesus died to deliver you, not just from sin, not just from death, but also from the bondage of the law. Let me keep building my case this morning. I have three things to share with you this morning. Here we go. Number one, the law was a guardian designed to protect you until Jesus came. The law, the, the Ten Commandments and the other 603 additional commandments, we're like a guardian or a tutor or, or a nanny or a babysitter. So let me explain. Galatians chapter three, if you, I'm going to cover Galatians chapter three, verses uh, 23 to 29. So this is what the apostle Paul said. Before the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we were placed under guard by the law. Paul says, before Jesus came and we could live by faith, we were placed under guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. Oh man, that's interesting language. 
He says, let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Jesus came, until Christ came, and it protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And now that the way of, of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. Did you catch that? I mean, this is this is about as plain as it can be, right? The Bible is saying, Paul is saying that the law was like a tutor or a nanny or a guardian, a babysitter, and protected us until Jesus came. It, how did it protect us? It protected us by telling us what not to do. It, it, it protected us by saying, hey, don't do this. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Don't do this and don't do that. And it, and it just protected us until the Holy Spirit came, until Jesus could come and give us the Holy Spirit. And so I'm going to build my case today. Paul continues. The Bible keeps going. And Paul says, for you are all children under God through faith in Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism. You've been baptized into Christ. You have put on Christ and it's like putting on new clothes. You no longer, watch this. There is no longer, once we're in Christ, there is no longer a Jew or a Gentile or slave or free or male or female. You are all one in Christ. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are heirs you are heirs of God and you are heirs to the promise and the promise that was given to Abraham belongs to you. And so even though I'm not a Jew, the blessing of Abraham is on me now. Why? Because I'm in Jesus. And in Jesus, it's not about Jew and Gentile, none of that. So Paul explains, let me, let me take my time. I don't want to get too excited. Several things in this point. A, uh, Paul called the law of Moses a guardian or a tutor, right? I didn't do that. He did it. He says that this guardian was designed to protect believers until Jesus came, because obviously that was not the ultimate solution. Jesus is the ultimate solution. B, the guardian of the law protected people by telling people what not to do. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. But it didn't empower them, right? It just told you what not to do, but it didn't tell you what to do. So, so and it didn't give old covenant believers access to the supernatural. It was just limited and it served its purpose for its time, but it was not God's best. C, once Jesus came, the Bible says, Paul said, the Holy Spirit said through Paul, we are no longer under the law as a guardian. Now we're able to live by faith and we have the faith of Jesus and we have access to the supernatural. And now that we're born again, the supernatural is natural to us. D, Jesus gave us access to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit, like the law, will tell us what not to do. But unlike the law, the Holy Spirit will also tell us what to do in order to maximize our purpose and potential in life. So the Holy Spirit, all the Holy Spirit could tell you to do is thou shalt not. I mean, the, the law was thou shalt, shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. The law was don't, hey, this is what you don't do, but it couldn't tell you what to do. The Holy Spirit will tell you what not to do and also what to do. E, when we accepted Jesus, it's like the Bible says, like putting on new clothes. The old covenant was is gone. Everything is new. The old covenant was external. It couldn't change you on the outside. The new covenant is internal. And so the Holy Spirit is inside of you and he changes you. Once you're born again, all things are new. F, last point there on this point, the old covenant was limited to the, dis oh man, this, this point is so good. The old covenant was limited to the descendants of Abraham. The old covenant was just for the Israelites. And under that covenant, women and Gentiles were treated like second-class citizens. Under the covenant of the old, the old covenant, the law, women and Gentiles were treated like second-class citizens. But now we have a new covenant. Say new covenant. Come on now. Under the new covenant, now, watch this, all people, regardless of race, or color, or gender. You got blacks and whites, Hispanics and Asians, Catholics and Baptists, Pentecostals and Protestants, men and women, young and old, rich and poor. We are all one in Christ Jesus. So once you're born again, now watch this, a woman that's born again has the same power that a man has that's born again. <laughs> so it's not about that. It was just, now that I'm born again, I'm not a Jew, but it doesn't matter. Jews and Gentiles, same thing. Hispanic, Asian, same thing. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter. Why? We are all one in Christ Jesus. Once you're filled with the Holy Ghost, then there's nothing you can't do because there's nothing God can't do and God lives on the inside of you. So now that you're born again, it's not about a bunch of rules. Now, it's, it's not about you can't do this and you can't do that. Once you're born again, the Holy Spirit will lead you in all things. He will tell you what not to do. He will also tell you what to do. He will tell you where to go and he will tell you what to do when you get there. He will tell you where to say when you're standing in front of people. He will give you wisdom and that exceeds your education and experience. He will give you downloads from heaven. He will give you favor with men. Simply put, when once you're born again, then all bets are off and, and that's it. It's a whole new world and it's not about you thou shalt not. It's about I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You got it? Number two. So number two, now I have to give you a warning. Let me give you a warning. Here's the warning. The law can be like an infection in your belief system. The law can be like an infection in your belief system. This is Galatians chapter five. I'm going to read for you verses six through nine from the Passion Translation. The Bible says, when you were placed into the anointed one, Jesus, and joined to him, circumcision and religious obligations can benefit you nothing. He says, listen, all of those rules, they don't benefit you anymore. All that matters now is living in the faith that is activated and brought to perfection by love. Before you were led astray, before you were led astray, uh, you were fa faithful to the Messiah. So I'm going to explain what's going on here. But he was like, man, before you guys were good, but now you've been led astray. Before you were faithful to the Messiah. Why have you now turned away from what is right and true? Who has deceived you? Like Paul is upset with the believers in Galatia. He says, the one who enfolded you into his grace is not behind this false teaching that you have embraced. No, not at all. What's this false teaching? I'm explaining here in a minute. He says, don't you know that when you allow even a little lie into your heart, it can permeate throughout your whole belief system. It's like it can infect your whole belief system. You got to be very careful now. You can't allow, allow a little lie. Another translation says, uh, uh, verse 9, a little yeast works itself through the whole batch of dough. If you drop, if I have a batch of dough and I drop a little bit of yeast in that batch of dough and I just, I let it sit, that little yeast will work itself throughout the whole batch of dough. And so he's like a little, a little bit of the law or a little bit of lie inside of grace can infect your whole belief system. So let me explain. So A, the apostle Paul visited Southern Galatia on his first missionary journey. This is in Acts chapters 13 and 14, and scholars date this trip early in his ministry around 47 or 48 AD. Now, Paul preached the gospel of grace during his trips, and while he was preaching the gospel of grace, people received it, they were born again, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and he planted churches everywhere he went. And so now, years later, he's writing a letter to the believers in Galatia. And these were people who were Jewish converts to Christianity like he was, people that were raised under the law, but now they were in Christ. So he says to them, hey, when you were placed into the anointed one, Christ Jesus, and joined to him, you know that circumcision and religious obligations, they no longer benefit you anything. All that matters now is faith and faith works by love. So Paul says that performance-based religion is, it doesn't matter anymore once you're in Christ and you've accepted the grace that Jesus provided. He says, now, if you, now that you're born again, and I taught you guys while I was there. So now if you try to go back to adding religious stuff to the grace of God, he says, you've been deceived. You've been led astray. And the sad truth is that what Paul was saying to the Galatians 2000 years ago, I can say to people today, there are people that are born again. And at first they're like, oh, this is so liberating. And then they allow people to put the law and rules right back on inside of them. And, and, and now if you try to add works to grace, and it's like saying now you, you, as, if, as if you are righteous by works, then now, like Paul says, you, you've been deceived. You're, you're being led astray. Once you're born again, you're righteous. You're not righteous because of what you do. You're not righteous because of what you failed to do. You are only righteous because of what Jesus did. And that's the grace of God. So the apostle Paul B, Paul says in the eighth verse, he says, the one who enfolded you into his grace 
is not behind the false teaching that you guys have, have embraced. No, not at all. What's the false teaching? The false teaching was, Paul said, now you got Jews that are born again, or then you got people that are not Jews that are coming into the church, and you guys are trying to put works on top of grace. You guys are trying to say, oh, hey, you wasn't circumcised, so you have to get circumcised. Oh, you, you were not raised with the law, the rules, but you guys have to obey this now. And they were adding self-righteousness or works to God's righteousness. And so Paul is like, no, you can't do this. In Romans, he explained it well. He says in Romans, he says, grace is a gift. This is Romans 11 and 6. He says, listen, let me explain something to you guys. It is by the grace of God, right? And it can't be a matter of good works. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the gift of grace because if it's earned, it is human effort. He says, all you could do with a gift is accept the gift. Grace is a gift. Grace is a gift. You can't work for the gift. You can't earn it. You can't. So, so he goes, let me go back to Galatians 5. And in Galatians 5, Paul is saying it's dangerous to mix. If you have the mixture of the Old Testament and the New Testament, it's danger because this mixture can contaminate your belief system. He says, don't you know that a little bit of leaven or a little bit of yeast can, can infect the whole batch? It will work itself throughout the whole thing. Just like a little bit of yeast does that. He says, if you, if you are like, no, it's by the grace of God that I am what I am. Hey, come here, brother. Hey, come here, sister. I need to tell you something. What? But you still need to do this and do this and do this to be righteous. You still need to do this and do this and do this to be righteous. No, what you're doing is you're introducing rules to grace. You're introducing works. And now if you think in your mind, well, let me do this. I need to do this so God can bless me. Uh, let me do this so God can, I need to be good so, so God can be good towards me. And so, so let me do this so, so I can work for it. Now what you're doing, he says, Paul says, be careful. A little bit of yeast can infect the whole batch. A little bit of that law can infect your whole belief system. And so, so if you watch this, if you start thinking that you have to be right to receive right, uh, then, then, then you're going to start thinking that your level of faith towards God, this is why this is dangerous. And this is why I'm slowing down. And I'm taking my time. If you think like I'm, like I'm explaining and what happened to the believers in Galatia, then what's going to happen is your level of faith towards God will be contingent upon your perceived level of goodness towards God. Let me, let me explain. So the reason why this is dangerous is because God will always call us to do things that exceed our performance. And so if you think, if your life or your understanding of God is performance-based, performance-based religion, here's the problem. Then your level of faith or belief towards God will always be limited to your perceived level of performance towards God. So if you think, if I'm doing something good, like, hey, I've been pretty good this year. Okay, well, now I can believe God for this. And when you're not, ooh, I haven't been to church in a while. Ooh, I haven't done, mm, I have mm, so yeah, oh, I shouldn't really, mm, I can't really ask God now. Oh, yeah, I can't really do. And the Holy Spirit is like, go do this. Mm, yeah, I'm not really, yeah, I'm not. Mm, what, what happened? Now you're basing things on your performance. And so now you can't operate on the level that God wants you to operate. For you to be the, the man or the woman that God called you to be, you got to decouple yourself from the flaws of your performance. And you got to say, God, I am ready to do whatever you want me to do. And I know that, I, listen, it's not about me being good because I'm not good enough. Now, I do want to be good. I, I do want to live free from sin. I do want to do all those things. But, 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 but I can't limit myself to my performance because you know that my performance is not good enough. And so whatever you want me to do, however you want me to do it, I'm down for whatever. And I will do it by the grace of God and I will do it for your glory. And so, but if you start saying, well, well, I can only believe on the level of my performance, then you're no longer, you're no different than the Old Testament. Jesus is irrelevant to you. You have made Jesus irrelevant because your, your whole belief system is based on your performance instead of Jesus. My belief system is based on Jesus and his finished works. And so whatever God wants me to do, I'm, I'm willing to do it, even though I know I'm not qualified, even though I know I'm not good enough, even though I know that my performance can never measure up to the size of God's grace towards me, I believe and I receive. And so now I can exercise faith that is based on grace not faith that is based on performance. If I put my faith based on my performance, my faith is going to be small. 
But when my faith is based on God's grace, I'm willing to receive whatever God leads me to do, however God leads me to do it. And so, so now Jesus is relevant in my life because I'm only righteous because of Jesus. But if I'm, if I'm basing it on my performance, I've made Jesus irrelevant. You got it? This is what this, this stuff is all about. Uh, somebody said they don't hear you. You need to repeat yourself. Uh, so, so listen, last point for today, number three. At the end of the day, uh, Jesus died to restore the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the key. So last point for today, and, and, and I believe this, th this is really important what I'm teaching. Galatians chapter five, verse 18. I'm going to read this to you from four different translations and then we'll break it down. Galatians chapter five and 18, easy to read version. The Bible says, but if you let the Holy Spirit lead you, you are not under the law. That's very plain. New Living Translation. But when you are directed by the Holy Spirit, you are not under the obligation of the law of Moses. I didn't make this up. Galatians 5 and 18, read it for yourself. The Passion Translation. But when you are brought into the full freedom of the Spirit of grace, you will no longer be living under the domination of the law, but you will be soaring above it. Amplified Bible. But if you are guided and led by the Holy Spirit, you are not subject to the law. I mean, all right, let me, last things as I'll give you. A, the Bible says in no unclear terms that once you're led by the Holy Spirit, like you're born again, the Holy Spirit is leading you. He's telling you what not to do, what to do, all that. You're no longer under the obligation of the law of Moses. These are not my words. They're God's words. They were penned by the Apostle Paul and actually inspired by the Holy Spirit himself. So you can argue against it, right? You can reject what I'm saying. And if, if you do, you're rejecting what the Bible is saying. You should read it for yourself. Even though this is written in plain English, I'm telling you, religious people will still say, mm, I don't know about that, Rick. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I don't know what the, the stronghold that religion has on people, but I'm reading, I'm showing you in black and white. And religious people will still say, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but still, I got to, you know, okay, fine. Look, live however you want to live. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And so you can reject it, uh, even though it's in plain English, but what you can't do is change it. You can't change what God said. If you are led by God's spirit, you are no longer under the law, period. That's it. I didn't make it up. Read it in the Bible. All right, B, we already learned that the law of Moses was a tutor, like a babysitter, Galatians 3 and 24. It served as a guardian until Jesus came. Jesus came. He ushered us into the new covenant. So we no longer need the babysitter. We no longer need the guardian. Now our heavenly father himself in the form of the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. Now we get to live like Jesus lived in this world. We are human conduits of the divine. When people come in contact with us, they come in contact with God and that's through the Holy Spirit. Okay, last thing I'll do for today. Sometimes it's good for me to provide you like a macro view. Sometimes I have to zoom out. So when you zoom out, sometimes like, you know, we zoom in. I like to zoom in a lot when I'm teaching. But sometimes I have to zoom out and give you like the big picture. And I've done that a few times, but I'm going to do it again today as we close. So we're going to zoom out real quick. I'm going to give you a macro view and then we'll close. You got it? All right, here we go. Here's the macro view as for the end of this message. God created Adam in his image. He placed his own spirit down inside of Adam. Adam was given divine power and authority. Adam was created to rule and to dominate this planet. And to ensure that Adam had the freedom to make his own decisions, Adam was given one rule. <laughs> and guess what? He broke that rule. As a result, sin and death were introduced into the world. So Adam was kicked out of the garden and every human born now is born in sin and shaping in iniquity because of Adam. So billions and billions of people were made sinners because of one man. Okay, you got that? Then God chose to use Abraham. God didn't choose to use Abraham because Abraham was good. God chose to use Abraham because God was good. God didn't give Abraham any rules because if God had given Abraham even one rule, he would have surely broken it because we as humans, we're not perfect and we're born with the sin nature of Adam. We were born as rule breakers because of Adam. So you don't have to teach a baby, a baby to lie. Watch this. Think about this. Have you ever heard a baby say yes first? You don't have to teach a baby to say no. A, a, a baby will always say no first. 
a baby knocks something over. Did you knock that over? Mm -mm, wasn't me. Wasn't me. You don't have to teach them to lie. They're born that way. We're born that way. We're born with the nature of Adam. We're just born that way. So, okay, that was Abraham. 430 years after Abraham, God gave the law to Moses. Okay. Now, there's a lot that happened in the Bible before the law of Moses was introduced. So now, here we go. 430 years after Abraham, God gave the law to Moses. There was 10 commandments written on tablets of stone, and then 603 more commandments. So 613 commandments total. These rules were not designed to make us right, because rules can't make us right. They were only designed to show us that we were wrong. And these rules were designed to prove to us that we needed a savior, and that savior came, and his name is Jesus, and he came to restore us and to get us all the way back to, to Adam and what he had in the garden. So Jesus restored the fellowship and the intimacy that Adam had with God in the Garden of Eden, walking with God in the cool of the day. So like Adam and like Jesus, Jesus walked around with the Holy Spirit on the inside of him when he was doing ministry. So like Adam and like Jesus, we get to live like that with the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Jesus said, I only say those things I hear my father say. I only do those things I see by revelation the father do. So Adam and Jesus were not rules-based. Adam and Jesus were spirit-based before Adam fell, of course. So the Bible tells us now that if we are led by the Holy Spirit, we're not under the bondage of the law of Moses. Like Jesus, we can be led by the Holy Spirit every day in every way, and this is how we're supposed to live. And this is the gospel. So please don't fight it. Just embrace it. This is the only way that you would ever become the man, the woman that God called you to be. So please remember, on Good Friday... And Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, what we're celebrating. We're celebrating the fact that Jesus died, restored the Holy Spirit. 50 days after Jesus' death, the Holy Spirit was restored. And now we can live like Jesus lived. Now we can live like Adam lived before the fall. So zooming out, I hope that helped you. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I trust that this, is, this has been a blessing. I've been taking my time. This is really important what I'm teaching. Speak this over your life. Say, Father... I thank you for taking the time to teach me your word. Your word changes the way I think, the way I feel, and the way I make decisions. Your word changes me from the inside out. My mind is being renewed through your word. Your word taught me that the law was like a guardian, and it was only designed to stay until Jesus came. Under the new covenant, I'm born again. The Holy Spirit now leads me. Like Adam walked with you in the garden, like Jesus walked with you on the earth, that's how I walk with you now. I am led of the Holy Spirit. I am no longer under the law, and the supernatural is natural to me. This is how I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. This is one of those messages again that you might need to listen to again. Get this down in your spirit. Listen, if you get my notes, uh, great. If you don't get my notes, you should want my notes. Go to todaysword.org. Click on the big red subscribe button. Get my notes so you can share them and all of that kind of stuff. I want you to see this with your own eyes. If this message was a blessing to you, leave me some comments in the chat and then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. Listen, I just want you to be free. I mean, this is what the Bible teaches. I'm sharing it with you. I pray that you receive it. I love you and God loves you more. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.